guys, it's my hugest honor to be here for a special edition Gracie Breakdown with Pedro, the Young Punisher, Munoz. Thanks for being here, sir. They call him the Young Punisher, but I want to change his nickname today. Pedro Mean Guillotine Munoz, okay? It's about to go down, sir. Thanks for being here. Six submission professional uh, guillotine victories as an MMA fighter, three of which in the UFC, two of which in the last two, three months? Three months. Three months? You guys, it's unbelievable. And I've had the honor of training with him on many occasions, and I've felt the guillotines myself. So every time I see him in the cage and the neck gets wrapped, his opponents, his victims, I have sympathy for them. For me, it's an honor to be here. Uh, the Grace Breakdown. I I always watch it, and it's really cool, and thanks for inviting me. My pleasure, man. So let's start with the most recent one, which was against Justin Scoggins, UFC right. Fight Night in Sao Paulo, your hometown. That must have been fun. That was a lot of fun. And uh, so it was second round. Yes. Right. Sure. Tell us what happened, how it went down. So he lost his balance? So uh, we were, basically, we were standing, uh, throwing some punches one another, and he lost his balance. I was, you know, keeping the pressure the whole fight, and he went to throw a kick, and then he fell. Right. So in that moment, you know, I went Boom. to Boom, he's down, and then he fell, so he didn't want to stay on his back, so he got up here. Yeah, in that moment, I went to attack his neck right away. Beautiful. And I trapped the arm in guillotine. So I went to jump a guard. So his shin comes across the belly, your leg came on his back over here. Correct. And then what did he do? He jumped over to try to defend the guillotine. So I just follow him through. Beautiful. And this leg right here automatically step over. So I started putting a pressure right here, uh -huh. and I already know that he's gonna roll to try to defend. So as he rolls right here this way, so he rolled into you, but and he's already feeling it by this point, right? Yeah. So because I started putting pressure. Oh here, yeah. Because I I, so he has a two option here. One tap because the pressure I'm gonna put. Right. The second one he's gonna roll try to escape. So he rolls right here. My left foot is gonna stay right here on the hip, and then my right leg is already trapped in the armor here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna climb right here a little bit and lock my feet right here. Nice. nice and tight. And normally, what do they do in this situation? They're gonna put pressure right here and try to lift it up the hip. Yeah, so what I do right here, I push through with my legs and then I release a little bit of pressure right here on my shoulder. So you think that you're gonna be able to take your head out. So as you do that, I trap it back right here behind your head and I start putting the pressure here in my legs also. You guys, this little detail right here, this is, everything changes when you understand guillotines to this extent right here. And you showed me this little release, let him think his head is slipping out detail a long time ago. And all of my victims have felt it since then, so I appreciate it. But let's give them a little more explanation of this because I don't think they understand fully how amazing this is. Because if you do the exact same, let's show what happens if you don't do that. Pull guard, even with the arm trap, arm trap. Same exact thing. Okay, let's say we're here, arm trapped or not, doesn't make any difference, right? If the guy's head is on the ground and Pedro simply pushes with the legs and does his squeeze right here, the fact that my head is so well wedged right here and so deep in the guillotine, I don't really feel much pressure. So explain once again, Pedro, how you get it to where he thinks he can pull his head out. I climb it right here a little bit and I'm gonna try trap over the shoulder. Right. So as I push right here, I release the pressure on my arm. You guys, so right now, this is the absolute trap of the century because he's loosening up the rope around my neck. Now let's show Pedro what I'm gonna try to do. Like, let me try and let, let me get my head out. Look, he thinks he's gonna do that. Exactly. But it doesn't go down like that. <laughs> <laughs> So from here, he goes down, they start to retract. Then what do you do? I trap back in here. You guys, this is basic alavanca on the most professional level because leverage, the longer the lever, the more leverage one has. And what I'm feeling right now is this is the fulcrum where he's breaking everything, he's choking me over the blade of his wrist. And the leverage that he has is determined by how high his armpit is because my head is the lever with which he is cranking my neck over the knife that is choking me. So the idea that he intentionally allows the opponent to think that their head is slipping out, to only then trap it up at the top of the crown right there and then crank them even worse than if the head were not slipping out at all. This is guillotine mastery on the highest level. And that's why, man, I for sure think Pedro has the tightest guillotine in MMA. Let's talk about this Russell Don guillotine because it's totally different. 
arm in deep, almost like an arm triangle, but from the front. But it's just categorized from the guillotine category in the guillotine family, but it's one of those. Show us what happens. You guys are standing up. It's right here, we're standing up. Starting a scramble, waiting for a takedown. Yeah. He turned his back, so it was right here. I didn't let go. I didn't. Let, I didn't let it go of the position. Mm -hmm. So as I trapped here, and the I cage started, was right here, right? Started, and the cage was right here. Boom! Here. So he couldn't run so, away. Yeah, I started putting this hook right here because I knew he gonna posture up right away. Because you know uh, what happened when I put the hook in? He thinks that I'm gonna attack the seat belt right here. So yeah, which everybody does. As I put this hook right here, he's starting this, posture up. This. As his posture up right here, I jump. <coughs> you guys, look! The arm was caught in the mix with the neck. One more time. That was amazing. So we're here. Right, he puts here. the hook. Put the hook. Guy, he knew the guy was gonna posture, so he comes and encompasses the whole thing. Now, you even close guard standing, jump the guard right there. He locks it. The arm is already trapped. And if we stay here, I'll go to sleep. So he came down. Boom. Woo! Totally different squeeze. This one is not so much wrist bone in the trachea. And the hip as well. It's the everything. It's a full triangle wrap with the arm is glued. My shoulder is choking myself here. Totally different. So, and show how you do it from turtle as well. He does this one from turtle alive. The guy's not standing. In the turtle same position. Idea. That was the same idea right here. So what I do, I start putting my knee right here in between Henner's elbows and his knee. So that's what I'm gonna do. So instead of I attack the seat belt right here, I'm gonna go the opposite way and trap my hand. So I'm gonna sit down right here and his leg is gonna be nice and tight on his back. Just in case, if you wanna try to defend, I'm gonna just follow him. Or if he doesn't, the other leg is gonna just have a space right here to go all the way around and trap it right here. So now I'm gonna squeeze him, starting working the guillotine. Totally different pressure, you guys. But what makes this one so amazing is the deceptive entry. Turtle standing, coming around from the side, wrap the neck. And what would you say, you have been doing guillotines for a long time now, and there's no one who's more inviting and more looking for guillotines when I spar with them than hits guy in the whole world. No one wraps the neck more willingly and more eagerly than Pedro. So the question is, for people out there who are just learning guillotines and people that you train with who, they go for them, but they don't really have the greatest success, what would you say for you or for them? What was the biggest transition for you or biggest tip you have for them in terms of catching guillotines and finishing them? I believe, believe, in a, believe in your choke, believe in your technique. Believe. Believe and just practicing over and over. Right, yeah, I call it tying the rope, right? Cause I'm trying to, I'm doing the same thing right now on this guillotine hype, training with guys like him and other great guillotine masters. I'm all about wrapping the neck right now and, and same idea is that I just tell my students, I say, listen, tie the rope and when your hands connect, whether it's around head and arm, whether it's just the neck, whether it's this modified guillotine with the arm trap, if you just tie the rope and become the master at just getting the rope tie, eventually those rope ties, at first you might get 10 rope ties and only two, they tap. That's true. And then you tie the rope 10 times, three, four, five, six, seven, before you know it, you're like this guy. But when the hands connect, it's no more negotiation. The deal is done. And you're only gonna build that confidence if you start tying ropes with a very low success ratio. That's it, you guys. Be loyal when the ratios are small. Be loyal when the choke tap outs are minimal. Because you don't ever arrive to this point without missing thousands of guillotines that you went for and they got out. Went, they got out, went, they got out, went, they got out. Before you know it, the numbers start to tighten it up and they don't get out anymore. You guys, this is it. Next week, I'm gonna be in Louisville, Kentucky on Thursday. Uh, at the certified training center out there. We're teaching a GST law enforcement course all week and then Thursday night seminar. Guess what the subject's gonna be? Guess what the subject is gonna be of the seminar? You guys already know. Mean guillotines. And I am gonna include this detail with your permission. The let the head slip out, but catch him on the last second. Detail is gonna be included and many other things that we've been working on. Uh, so I'll see you guys there Thursday. Also, January 14th, here at the Academy, about one month from now, we have our semi-annual women's self-defense free seminar, two-hour seminar, free for anyone, anywhere in the world. Come in, make this happen. The amount of guys who train jujitsu, who want their wives to train jujitsu, but don't know how to get them into it, take them to a BJJ class at the local academy, and they look at that and they don't want anything to do with that. But when you have a class with only women, all first-time students, and they can try it in a safe, functional, actual self-defense setting, guess what? They love it. 
So if you know anyone, send this video, let them know. Seminars at gracieacademy.com. Save your spot in that free seminar. Any final words for our friends, sir? Um, you know, like I said before, it was a pleasure to be here with you. You know, you, you guys always, you know, help me, Leo, to all those guys, you know, adjust our techniques. And uh, if you guys looking for like a great instructor and coach, that's the Gracie Academy right here in Torrance. Henry Gracie. Much respect. And he also trains down there in King's MMA in, uh, in Huntington Beach Huntington. with Rafael Cordero and the team down there. A great academy if you're down there. Go check those guys out as well. If you're not in Huntington Beach or in Torrance, go to gracieuniversities.com. Certified training centers all over the world. We got you covered. Much respect. Guillotines for life. That's what's up. Thank you, brother. Thank you. The good thing that get it there, get it this armor right here trapped is once they started release right here his head, let's say I couldn't finish in a guillotine, he was faster than I, so I ended up right here losing his knife completely. So what I'm gonna do, like immediately right here, I'm gonna just grab my shim, and trap right here in a triangle. So beautiful. That's the benefit of having your arm trapped in the mix. Sometimes there is no arm. You do like, a, you start off in this kneeling again, you wrap my neck, you bring the shin, right? And now when he slips his head out, since you can't do the triangle, what do you do? Beautiful, Lock. beautiful. That's what's up. You hang around, you get bonus details.